Hello guys, Eddie Gill here with you again from Rand's Aircraft and another how-to video. Today we're going to address Airworthiness Directive number 142 which uh, addresses the fuel tank shifting uh, the swelling of the tanks. Uh, today we're going to install this on a finished flying aircraft actually an airplane that has several hundreds of hours uh, so that if you are in the same situation and you've been flying your plane for a bit these can easily be installed. If you are currently assembling your kit um, it's, it's quite a bit easier on the bench but uh, it's, it's not to be uh, considered a difficult task in a finished aircraft. The very first step that we want to do is attach our anti-chafe tape as the instructions illustrate so I've already prepared that and installed the anti-chafe tape. That's a very important step before you fit this. Next we're going to take a look at the actual opening and see what we're going to do there. Okay guys, before we start with the actual measuring and installation of the, the tank supports, this is a good moment to mention. It's a good idea to keep an eye on the tinnerman here and the tinnerman here and especially the screws, making sure that they're not contacting or migrating into the tank. If so, the resource that you have is to probably file these holes a little bit further aft. It doesn't take a whole lot, maybe a sixteenth eighth of an eighth of an inch, and um, you might have to do that in the inspection cover as well, just to move those holes back. Okay, so because we mentioned that the tank supports will fit into a new wing or an existing wing, I want to show that we supply the part a little bit longer than needed. In a new installation you wouldn't have to do any trimming of this part, but because this tank has already migrated somewhat back, I'm contacting the back side of the, of the spar and this aft support should clear the fuel tank. So I'm going to have to do some trimming on this. I'm going to mark it. I'm going to say maybe not right with the edge, but maybe a sixteenth, eighth of an inch behind the edge of the tank. So um, we're going to go ahead and trim this part and I will be right back. Okay, so the next step is to locate our six holes. Now the AD does specify a measurement for those holes at 3.8 and 4.8 inches from the trailing edge. Okay, I'm doing 3.6 and 4.6 on this particular installation just because the tank has migrated back and I don't want to risk having the, the forward holes too close to the bend uh, on that angle piece that we have installed. So, in your particular case, Mark them where they're supposed to go. If it's a new build, it's not going to be any issue. But if it's if the tanks have already expanded somewhat, just make sure that that dimension is going to work. And if not, just move it back a little bit. The flange on these parts is purposely made so extremely wide that um, that you're not going to have any issue hitting that that flange. Okay. So we've marked the 3.6 and 4.6. We've use a straight edge to join those lines okay so we've got we've got parallel lines um, and then we're just going to use a, um, a 90 degree angle to mark the location as it shows on the AD following this rivet jump a rivet follow that rivet jump a rivet mark that one okay so now we're going to drill 40 size pilot holes in all six of those locations. Okay, I have removed my tape and we can see the six holes that we've drilled. These are still number 40 size holes. We're using them as pilot holes, okay? So we'll have a chance to enlarge these to number 30 all together once all parts are sandwiched together. So this rib right here, the flange on this one, points inboard, okay? So the AD states that the tank support is to be pushed up against that flange. So we wanna, we're gonna put this inside the wing, okay? And we're gonna do these one at a time. 
we'll do the, the rear one, we'll take it out, we'll do the forward one, we'll take it out. So we wanna push this until we're certain that it's contacting the flange, okay? There I have a nice solid, solid stop on the flange. I'm pushing it back up against the trailing edge and we're going to mark the holes with a Sharpie. Here we have our six holes. So we're gonna do that with the forward tank support, and then we're gonna drill them to number 40. Okay, we're back and we have now drilled our 12 holes, six in each one, on our marks. We're going to install them and clico them in a few places. So this, the sequence is very important. The back one goes in first. And that is shown in the AD drawing. We have a Cleco. Push that guy all the way back. Then we install the front one. Okay, now what we're going to do is drill these to number 30. We'll put a Cleco, a number 30 size Cleco in those. We'll take the 40s out, upsize those to number 30. Then we'll take it all out to deburr it and then final install it. Okay, so now we have taken it apart. We've deburred everything. We've cleaned the inside of the tank, make sure there's no burrs, no chips, and we are ready to start riveting. So let's uh, put a rivet in. Okay, we'll finish riveting that up and we'll close up with you guys. All right guys, and there we have it riveted in place. And that is all there is to the fuel tank migration problem. Stay tuned for more cool videos. Thanks for watching.